Hey everyone, Steve Jackson from Imprintables Warehouse here and I want to thank you for coming by today to check out the Imprintables Warehouse Ultimate Pricing Calculator. Throughout this video I'm going to show you the different tabs, functions, and capabilities of this calculator and lead you through the process of using it to calculate out jobs for your business and show you how you can make things a lot simpler. So if you have some questions make sure you send them my way, steven at imprintables.com all the information is down below in the description of this video, along with the times in the video for the different categories, tabs, and features of the calculator. So if you want to skip ahead and just check that out, you can follow that down below in the description, and it'll show you the time in the video, and you just fast forward to that time and you can see that specific section. So thanks again for stopping by. I really appreciate you guys using this calculator, and let me know how we can continue to make it better for you. Okay, so here we are in Excel, and uh, you've downloaded the calculator and saved it to your desktop or some folder, and now you need to open it up and be able to use the calculator. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to come over and go to Open in Excel and find whatever location it was that you saved it in. And here I've got it in the, the folder that I'm going to distribute it to you guys in. So you hit Open, and it'll open up to the main page, but what you need to do first after you've opened it is right here it comes up with a security warning and it says that macros have been disabled some of the functionality of the calculations the reset buttons and other uh, features of this calculator are all done with visual basic uh, coding in the background and to be able to make that work you need to enable macros uh, or else it won't work properly so you hit options here and then enable this content so and then when I hit OK that warning will go away and the different buttons that I've created within the calculator to, to make things easier for everybody will be able to function properly now and it even says it up here important you will need to enable macros to get full function of the calculator uh, so very important on that this is the main page or navigation page for everything on here we've got the uh, different buttons to go to different tabs these buttons will take you right to the tab or you can go to the tab down here they're all color coded to match up with the buttons there is a explanation of what the different color codings are for the spaces within the document uh, the direct button to the heat transfer calculation tab and signed product calculation tab there's a button here it's not functional for YouTube video tutorial which is what you're watching right now and once I've got this all recorded and edited and uploaded then I'll have that active there and you could click on it and go to the YouTube tutorial video that you're watching and then also the button to go to the great garment graphics webinar that we did on the version one of this calculator uh, there's a lot of good information there that was outside of the calculator itself that kind of showed how I created the calculations and what goes into them. So those are all the functions here. Of course, you can send me a direct email using the, the mail to button right there. If you've got some questions, comments, or maybe a suggestion, uh, we've gotten some really good recommendations from different people, and that's what's allowed us to add some new functionality to the calculator and make it more robust and, and a nicer product for all of you out there. So this is the main page and how to get around it. And I'll click on, uh, I'll just hit the heat transfer button. You guys can see it goes to the heat transfer page. And then I can return to main page with that one there. Uh, sign product calculations, it would go to this one. And if I scroll down a little bit, now I've got return to main page and so on and so forth. Um, so that's the navigation from the main page of the spreadsheet. Next, we're going to go over a little bit of the tabs overview. Uh, the different tabs that are within this calculator are the main page that you see here. We've got the heat transfer calculation page, which does all our heat transfer medias, either CAD cut or digital print and cut heat transfer medias. And then the sign products tab, which calculates out different sign projects, uh, including single color CAD cut or uh, digital print and cut and along with that it includes in the different items that you might be putting into that job like grommets or hem tape or a specific substrate and then we've got the different data tabs is where you're going to put in all of your products we've got ours already plugged into here for you so it makes it a little bit easier uh, that's the CAD cut heat transfer there's one for digital print and cut heat transfer one for sign media CAD cut which would be single color and then the digital print media 
for signed products here. And then we've got this Mask, Ink, and Extras tab. And what this one is is kind of the, the gathering of all the other items that don't fit into the other tabs for uh, data information that goes back into the calculator. We've got our different masks for heat transfer, uh, heat transfer, sorry. Uh, we've got the ink right here, including white and metallic ink support. We're going to go over this a little bit later. Over laminates, banner accessories, grommets, transfer tape, all the different things that you would be using for projects that might not fit into the other tabs there. And we're going to explain how to edit up each one of these tabs and what to do with them. So, uh, and then we've got the overhead tab for calculating your shop overhead and a regional data tab, which is, this is kind of a work in progress. I've been asking people and I encourage all of you out there, if you want to contribute to it, please do send me an email and let me know. This is the criteria for the different areas. We're getting information on what you charge for single CAD color t-shirt, a digital printed one, a banner and a decal and uh, all the specifics in there. And then we took all the different states that I've gained data from and it's it's hidden inside here you guys can't see all the calculations in this but uh, it's an average of every bit of data that I've gotten from them so you can see state by state so far where we're at for averages now I'm in New York State so let's take a look at that I'll scroll down and I see New York State for a uh, single CAD cut color shirt they're doing 1243 or basically 1250 a shirt and that includes the garment and everything uh, for digital they're at 1429 and then so on and so forth for the uh, this one's for the decals I believe no nope, banner and then the last one's decal so that's a quick overview of the tabs and navigation this one uh, possibly I should add a, a navigation button it's the only one that doesn't have one but every other one has a return to main page will get you back to start and uh, kind of a, a safe haven bring you back to that so that's a a little overview of the different tabs and next we'll look at the overhead tab and then break into the data tabs. We're on the navigation screen here and to go to the overhead tab this is where you're gonna kinda start with setting up the calculator for yourself. We'll click on the go here to the overhead tab and this is where you're gonna put in all the different items that you need to pay for over a course of a month to be able to keep your shop open, whether it's a shop that's in your home, your home based, or you have a retail location, whatever it may be. So you've got your rent included in there, utilities, phone, internet, all the different items down there, lease payments, payroll, donations, and you can add in all of these categories here. You can input information into there and put the different uh, costs associated with those in here. And on a recommendation of one of the people who looked over the calculator, they asked to put notes in here. So, so maybe under your phone, you want to put a note in there that says uh, the phone is broken up in between a cell phone and the phone for the business location. So there's a little bit of place in here where you can enter notes in there. It calculates a total for you. That's a locked area. Anything that's a green area like this or the gray areas around here, they're locked areas. You cannot enter any data, and that's kind of to protect the calculations that are in there. So you don't accidentally go down here and click in there and put zero or put in 500 for that's what your one of your payments is, and then it clears that calculation, and you, you, can't, you don't know the calculation, so you can't get it back to where it was. So I've protected those areas that you might accidentally mess up and, and kind of clear data in there. Anything that's this orange color you can put in and we put in how many hours per week that location was open and the average, the industry average for the sign and garment industry for weeks per year open. This is to account for holidays and uh, different uh, times that you might be closed for specific reasons. You, you can adjust this, but the industry standard right now is the industry average, I should say, is 50 weeks per year that's open. Now it takes this information that you've put in and shows you how many hours per month you're open and your operating cost per hour. That's calculated from all the variables you've put in here. So say in my wife's shop, uh, this might be the data for her shop or any other shop that we, we were talking to, their operating cost to be able to stay open per hour, they have to make $63.38 an hour in sales to be able to pay all of the different variables that are in their overhead. So a lot of times when people are asking me how to calculate out the cost for something, I can show you how to calculate the cost. This calculator will calculate the cost for you, but you have to include overhead, and overhead can be drastically different depending on where you're at. 
uh, upstate New York to down in Florida. It's going to be different overheads on it, especially rent-wise, uh, utilities, heating, cooling, things like that. So this is the area where you're going to enter in those variables for yourself and be able to customize it for your shop. And as always, once we're done with a tab, we hit return to main page. Now let's look at some of the media tabs. Uh, what I want to go over first is the, you know, sorry, second. First was going over the overhead. Second is go over the different media tabs and enter in your data for it. So we'll start off with CADCUT heat transfer. When I click on that one there, it takes me to the CADCUT heat transfer data table. See, it says CADCUT heat transfer data, and this is digital print heat transfer data and so on. These are data tabs. I've got all the imprintables warehouse medias in here that we have right now. And you can change, you, you can add different medias if you wanted to. So say you're, you're getting a, one of the Stahl's products, you might add that in there and enter in your information for it. And what this has is you're going to put the width of the roll that you get. I put in this next one here, width used by rollers. Anybody who's done any CAD cutting knows that there's a certain amount of media that's lost due to the pinch rollers holding that media down as it goes across. You can get it down to probably a little less than an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch on most of the units out there. Uh, but I like to be more conservative about it. If I say one and a half inches and I need to kind of bump those in a little bit and I'm actually losing one and a half inches of media, well now my cost is going to be cost per square inch and cost per square foot would be higher. So say if I put in uh, 0.75 inches, you'll see that my cost per square foot went down. So I'll put that back to 1.5. It's, it's 1.8 right there. I want to enter that. It goes up a little bit. I'd rather be more conservative here because this is how I'm calculating my costs. So I, I'm going to go with the most conservative. And you can put whatever you want in here. Uh, I've had some people that like to put zero in there. I, I think that by putting this in there and having it available to you, it shows you how to control those costs and how to be able to get an accurate calculation for it. Next in there is the length of the roll. You might be getting a 30-yard roll, 25-yard roll, 10, whatever you're getting. I just didn't put everything in for the 5-yard rolls. And then the price per roll, and that's actually the wrong price. i got to adjust that there. So price per roll on that, I believe it's 34.20 right now. But maybe I want to put in here is that uh, on the price per that roll, I'm going to include in my shipping because uh, shipping generally isn't free to anybody out there. And I want to calculate all my costs in. So price per roll might be the list price, or you might choose to put in the price that it costs you to get it to your door. So on this one, maybe I'm going to say it's, um, we'll say $40 because it's going to cost me $6 in shipping. Now I have a cost per square foot of usable material because I took out the one and a half inches from what was on those pinch clamps, and I can use that entire five yard roll. That cost me $40 to get that usable material in there, and now my cost per square foot is $2.37. And it also adjusted cost per square inch. These are locked tabs because there's a calculation working with the variables you put in there. So you can adjust anything within these areas right here. And you can see I can't even go into that area. And I've locked the, uh, the media over here so that we've got those um, set up for different drop-down tables. When you add other medias and other variables in here, it will automatically update the calculator and the drop-down tables. And so you, it will, we just don't want these to get messed up because there's some back-end information also. So you've got all these variables you can enter in here, and that's how you calculate out your price of the roll, square foot, and square inch. The same applies to the digital heat transfer. I can always return to the main page and then go to my digital heat transfer data and do the same here. I can take whatever roll of media I'm working with, uh, put in the width of it, the, how much I use by the pinch rollers, the length of the media, the price of that roll, and don't forget shipping. A lot of people do. And it'll give me the cost per square foot and cost per square inch. Again, return to the main page when we're done then and sign media CAD cut. I can go through my different sign medias. Same concept. Whatever media I'm using, I'm going to put in the width um, used by rollers, the, the width of the roll, and uh, down through the price of the roll, square foot, square inch, and so forth. And sign media. We've got all the different sign medias in here. Again, anything that's within this black outline on any one of these data pages, you can enter in, and it will update in the calculator later on. Uh, so anything that's within that black area. If I were to input some data on the outside of this, it would not update in the calculator. So you want to maintain everything within that black area there. 
and then mask ink in laminate substrate data. This is all that miscellaneous stuff we were talking about earlier and that I can enter in different masks that I'm going to use uh, for the projects, whether it's heat transfer or down below we've got the sign mask. I've got my inks I can put in that. And as a note on the inks for the CMYK colors, uh, we've got a cartridge cost, but this price right here, uh, and I'll talk about this a little bit later as well, this cost is derived from how much I calculated I used ink in my shop. Now we've got several printers in here and what I did is I took a two week period and averaged out the amount of media that we printed through there and the amount of ink that we used and you can find that in Versaworks. And when I took those calculations and ran it, I found that I was on average uh, using 23 cents of, of ink per square foot. So I rounded that up to 25. You can put any number you want in here. These are open for you. Uh, down below here, this is a calculation. So it says average per square foot or milliliter for white and metallic inks. White and metallic, you put in your cost of the cartridge, and then it will calculate how much per milliliter that is costing you. And you'll see when we do the white metallic ink calculation later on why we have it this way, because you need to kind of find out with that how many milliliters of ink you're using. And with normal inks, it's, it's a little easier to work with if we just use an average per square foot. So that's a, a little overview of the ink there. And then into over laminates, we've got the different over laminates for the digital print products, banner accessories, grommets, and transfer paper for these uh, different sign products, and also an area for substrate. Say you're using coroplast or foam core. And again, you can add in whatever you want into these areas. You can change the width of it, put in your price per sheet in this area here. We'll calculate out the cost per square foot and per square inch for you. Uh, up in areas where there's not maybe a, a square inch or square foot, say like the grommets, I put in how many grommets I get in a pack and how much that, that set costs me, and it gives me price per grommet for that job. So everything's automatically calculated for you once you've put in the different variables. And again, we'll return to the main page. That's an overview of the different tabs for data and what we can enter into them. Next, we're going to look at some of the calculations. So the first thing in calculations we're going to go to is we'll try the heat transfer. So when I click on heat transfer, it opens up to the heat transfer calculation tab. And I first off, when I get started with a job, I want to uh, choose what type of job I'm doing. Either it's a single color media, or maybe I'm using Spectra Bling or Ecofilm, or it's a digital print and cut transfer where I'm using, say, Quick Print or Solutions Opaque or one of those medias. So I'm going to choose the job type, and we'll start out with a CAD cut transfer. Now, it's kind of hard to see these sometimes. Uh, you see it's kind of small in there. Unfortunately, Excel doesn't allow me to have that uh, increase the font size. It's a drawback of it. Um, I'm trying to find some workarounds for it, but right now it, it doesn't allow us to get any closer on that. You can change the zoom level. Anytime you want to zoom in or out on this, you can either hold the control key on your keyboard, and as you're holding the control key, um, scroll with your mouse, and you can zoom in that way. And then when we drop it down, it's a little easier to see, or you can go up to the view tab and zoom, and you can either use a custom percentage or use one of these. So maybe I pick 75 and I hit OK, and that zoomed out a little bit. Um, let's actually zoom in a little bit. We'll go to 50%. Oh, I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? I need to go, uh, we'll say 125 and zoom in. And that zoomed in quite a bit for us. And when I drop this down, I can see those a little bit better. So once you get used to where different things are, uh, it's not real hard to find them. Or maybe you got to zoom in a little bit. And like I said, I'm trying to find a workaround for this so that it corrects that issue. But I haven't found it quite yet. So we'll, uh, I'll hold the control. I'm going to actually, sorry, go to CAD Cut Heat Transfer. And you'll notice that it switched these two. When I go in between these two, it blacks out the other row there so that uh, you don't get confused by what's going on. It's only got the area in there. Those calculations, it's still live underneath there. It doesn't add it into anything that we calculate. Um, but it, what it does is it kind of removes that from your view so you don't get confused. And uh, I want to clear those out, so I'll hit Reset Fields, and that's going to clear that out for me. And I'll go back to that CAD Cut Heat Transfer. And I've got Spectra Bling here, great product. We'll, we'll try that one out. So once I've chosen the type of project I'm going to do, I can use this drop-down menu here, and I can choose the media out of the different CAD Cut ones. And you'll notice that this list of medias 
we'll go back to uh, bling, comes right from that CAD cut heat transfer data list, everything in here. So if I'd added anything down here, say we'll put Steve as a media down in here, and uh, we'll put it as a 15 inch roll, one and a half inches wide, uh, five yards in length, and um, $50 for a roll, I'm expensive. So we'll do all that, and then when I go back to the heat transfer tab, and drop this down, you'll see there's the Steve Media. And when I, I go ahead and say I'm going to do a 12 by 12 inch design, and there's my cost of that design. So it automatically updates everything in the drop down list as long as it's within that black area that we talked about. So as long as it's within the black area that's designated in there, it will automatically update in that drop down menu. So actually, I should delete that Steve out. We're not going to use that. So we'll delete that and this. And then we'll go back to heat transfer. Steve's not there anymore. And we'll go back to that bling. There it is, our bling. And we had a 12 by 12 design. Let's make this a 5 by 5. You can see it updates in the cost of that single design. So we've entered in the variables for what size of design I'm doing. And we'll touch on this multi-layer here in a little bit. We've uh, entered in the size of the design. I'm not using any ink. It knows that because it is a uh, CAD cut heat transfer. There's no ink involved in this, and there's no mask involved either. That's why that's blackened out. I can tell it how many are in the job. It always defaults to one here, so it's, it's always going to have that. I can increase this. Say I'm going to do six of these shirts. When I hit six, you'll see the total cost of the job updates, and now I can put down what my sale price of the item is, and this is per item. So I'm going to sell this garment at $12, and the cost of the garment, the cost of the materials in that was only $0.45 cents for that one garment. The cost of the garment itself cost me $2, and I'll scroll down a little bit, and you'll see now that my profit per item is going to be $9.55. Now in here, this area below this uses the overhead tab that we filled out earlier, to be able to calculate how many I need to kind of break even per hour. Um, I had a lot of questions since the last video and webinar I did of, of people asking, well, I want to know what my profit is off of just account. The way this calculation portion is set up is it uses that overhead per hour, and it's a way for you to see, hey, if I can do, say, 12 of these per hour, am I breaking even? If I do 12 per hour, and it comes down that, well, profit on that job, if I were doing 12 in that hour, would be $114. My shop rate was 63.38. That's what I needed to make. So yes, I would be making a, a little bit of profit on it. Maybe I can, in 12 in an hour, I'm, I'm only taking 30 minutes instead of the whole 60 minutes to do this. So I'm still ahead of the game on that. So this is just a way to kind of see, am I, am I pricing things appropriately that for my time being used on it, that I'm still making a profit? So that's what this portion here is for. Over here, we've got a markup multiplier. The markup multiplier allows us to kind of use a basis for what we need to be making off of this. Um, the, the most consistent rule of thumb that I've seen from different shops is they multiply these by three. So if it costs me 45 cents for that design, that cost that single design was 45 cents right there, and I put in three, or we'll start with one on the markup multiplier, you'll see that it went to 45 cents is, is what my cost is. Now, if I want to get a, a rule of thumb and say, hey, I do three for this, it's $1.35 now, that's showing what maybe I'm going to use as a basis for when I'm pricing this out to a customer. Maybe I get into there on any design. I, I like to do things by basic size of design. So a left chest, maybe I'm doing a 4x4, four four, or a left chest and a full back, well, a full back plus that, that left chest might be a total of a square foot of material. So if I put 12 in here by 12 for my design, it's $2.61 for that material that's used into it. And I can see down here if I put that one into the markup, again, it's 261. But if I use that rule of thumb of three, I can see it's $7.83. So maybe I say for a, a shirt that's a left chest and a full back, I'm going to charge $8.00 plus the cost of the garment for this particular job. It's just a way for you to be able to have a rounding or you know maybe I want to do times three for my retail and times two for wholesale 
or discounted or something like that. It's just a way for you to, to help you figure out some of those costs. So that's what the markup multiplier is there. And multi-layer comes into effect when we start using these buttons, and we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute here. So yardage calculator's next over here. With the yardage calculator, it takes the amount of material that you were using and the number of items in the job, and it says, hey, with this current layer, this current job that I have set up here, I'm going to need 1.37 yards to complete this job. So maybe I'm doing a whole bunch of these. Uh, this job I'm going to do 24. And now I need uh, almost six yards, and I'm looking at my stock. I've only got one, maybe two yards. Uh, well, now I've, I've added this button in here, this functionality, that when I click on this, it will go to the web page and right to that particular product. And let me bring it over onto the screen for you guys because it just popped up there. And it came right to the Spectra Bling website. So it's kind of a, a handy tool for you. If you were working with and you saw, hey, I need some yardage, I can click on the order now, and it will go directly to that page so that you can order that item. Okay. As always, a return to the main page. And then up here we've got reset fields. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go back and adjust this. We're going to do five, uh, actually let's do a four by four, left chest, a four by four for this one, for the Spectra Bling, and we're going to do, that's 29 cents for that one, we're going to do Bling on the left chest front, and on the back I'm using Ecofilm. So I'm using two different products, or maybe I'm using two different colors of Spectra Bling, this is what I'll do, I'll do a four by four left chest with two different colors of Spectra Bling, so I've got two layers there, and my third layer is the back is going to be Ecofilm. So this is where our multi-layer support is going to go in. So I've got the 4x4 four four for the first layer of bling. And um, we'll just put one in the number of jobs right here. I've got my total cost for that layer is $0.29. Cents. And I'll, I'll kick over just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to zoom out so you guys can see this a little bit better. And when I... Sorry, it's jumping a little bit there. When I click on layer 1 it updates over here for layer one materials cost. Okay, So we're going to use this section for calculating the rest of the job when we're using multi-layer. So my first one was a 4x4 four four of bling, and that was layer one. And I'm going to do that twice, though, because I'm using bling twice, two different colors, for that left chest. So since I'm using it twice in the same material, I don't need to change the size or anything. I can click layer two. So those were both 29 cents. And then the back is going to be a 10x10, and it is Ecofilm. So we'll drop this down and we'll go to the top. That's where Ecofilm is here. And I'm going to do a 10 by 10 on the back. And we'll see that's $1.65. And I'll click over just a little bit so you can see the layers section over here. And when I click on layer 3, it adds that $1.65 for it. So now I can see with each one of those independent layers and those different medias, and I could even do um, add a layer of digital print and cut media. I'm doing two layers of bling, one layer of ecofilm, and then I'm going to do some quick print on this. I can do up to four layers on this. So let's do that and show you how to do a multimedia. So we'll drop this down and go to digital print and cut, and it changed everything out in here. I'm using quick print. I already had it selected, but I could choose from my different materials from the drop down. And this one's going to be a 6x6 six six that's in there. We've got some effect or some picture of somebody in there, 6x6. Six six. And I need some mask for that, so I need to add that in. So I'm going to add mask, and we're going to use uh, eco mask on this. Ink was used, so it adds in that cost of ink. And you see it update over here after every one of these that I did. So it's 71 cents for that piece of 6x6 six six quick print, and I'm going to add that to layer 4. I added my mask, and ink is automatically added in. It knows that it needs it for that media. So we'll put that on layer 4, and there's that 71 cents. And now when I look down this, the total cost of the job of materials for one shirt was $2.94. It adds up each one of those different layers. Now, in the first calculator, we didn't have the multi-layer support, and a lot of people got confused because they were saying, well, if I'm doing a 5x5 five five and a 5x5, five five, I'll just make it 10x10. Ten ten. But that actually adds a lot more material because it's 10 inches wide by 10 inches wide instead of 5x5, five five, which is 25 square inches, and then 5x5, five five, another 25 square inches. Uh, it's it's a lot more media when you do it the other way. So we had to put in each individual layer, and that's what we've added here. So now this job, I'm doing 12 of these, so I'll put in 12 for the number of job. And it updates sale price for item, $12. 
and I need to, that was per item, profit per item right here, and I need to update this, I think. I, I'm gonna add another field in here, so you guys are seeing something I'm noticing uh, firsthand in here. I need to be able to put what the total for the job is, so I need to add that in. I'll write a little note here. Total job, like we had on the other side for it. So right now, uh, without that in there, you, you can't see with the total, uh, the number of items in the job updating. But for this particular one, cost was 294 for all of those layers together. And then sale price was 12. Maybe we're going to take two on that. And I'm making $7.06 profit per item. And I need to be able to complete, say, all 12 of these in an hour. And I can see that I would be making $21.34 on that. So I need to update that to show you guys the total cost of uh, all the materials in the job. I'll add that in there. But that's how you would use the multi-layer support over here. So uh, before, I up, before I post this up for everybody, I'll have that updated. So again, uh, order now. If I click that now, it would go to quick print because that's the current one selected. We'll, we'll click on that. And again, it opened up on my other screen there, so I'll drag it over and it went right to quick print for us. So uh, kind of a handy way. Now you would have to do that for each individual one. So if I'm doing quick print and bling and ecofilm and I know I need some, and this one I only need uh, less than uh, 0.04 yards, I don't need much at all for this, but say I was doing a lot, um, I, I would put that in there. Now the yardage calculator is also based off of the number of items in job over here, not number of items over there. So if I, if I want to check out my yardage for that particular one and I'm going to do 12 in this, I need to put 12 here. So now it updates for that yardage calculator. So again, the order now and all our layers. When I click on reset fields, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit on this so you can see that all the different fields in there, when I click on that, it resets all of the fields on both sides. So everything is reset and we're back to ground zero with this. So that's the heat transfer calculation tab with multi-layer support. I'm checking over my notes real quick. Thanks for hanging with me. And next we'll look at the assigned products one. So I'll go back to return to main page. And while we're looking at the assigned product calculations, we'll click on the, the button on the main page. And this takes us to one that's a little bit more complex than the heat transfer because there's a bit more that can go into assigned product. Again, it's the same as uh, the one before where we're gonna pick our job type. Maybe it's a digital print and cut or maybe it's a CAD cut sign and it, it changes in here for us. And we've got the choice of mask being used on anything. Maybe I'm using a, a, a transfer mask with my CAD cut sign products um, or digital, either or. It lets us choose ink and whether we're using that or not. Uh, if I'm using white or metallic ink, now that, that wasn't available in the heat transfer because at this time uh, we found that white and metallic ink don't work with heat transfer products very well, that it's not very durable. Uh, and maybe that'll change in the future, and if it does, we'll add that in there. But for this one, we can do white metallic ink, and it has the cost of the specialty ink over there. We add our lamination. Was hem tape used? Is this a banner product? Were we using grommets in the final product? And I didn't just limit it for grommets, say, for banners, because maybe I'm doing a coroplast sign and I'm putting grommets in that to hang it up. So all these variables are open to you for any one of the projects. And it comes down, same as the other one, your total price per piece, which is based off all the different variables you use. Total cost of the job, sale price per item, and it'll give you a profit per item. And then we can calculate in our shop rate. Everything is the same as the heat transfer one in concept. We've just added a couple different things in here with the laminate and the hem tape and grommets and substrate and everything else. And remember, all of these variables are driven from the sign media, digital print, and the mask and ink extras tabs, that data that we have in there and what you add into it later on. So we'll do a project here. We're going to do CAD cut and I'll do a 12 by 12 with our Arlon and I don't want to use the black and white. I'm going to use uh, Arlon 5000, some of the color media. So that costs 50 cents there. I'm going to need some mask, so I, I hit yes for mask, and then it's going to ask me type of mask here, and I need to put that in. And again, the, it, it's not real easy to see, so I'll click outside of that and we'll zoom in. I hold the control key and scroll while I come in, and now I can see them a lot better. And uh, I had a 12 by 12, so I'm going to use my 14 inch application tape, and it shows me the cost of mask there. 
This was a CAD cut item, so I didn't use any ink, so I'm going to leave all that open. And this one, uh, it has a little note there when you hover over the metallic and white, and we'll, we'll get to that for the metallic and white support. So was it laminated? I'm not doing that. No hem tape. Maybe I'm using grommets. I'm going to say I'm using grommets in this. This is going on a coroplast sign. So I'll put yes there, and uh, we're going to use the brass grommets, number two. And we're going to put uh, two grommets in this. It's a small sign. I just need two grommets, and it gave me the 18 cents that it cost for that. And like I said, I'm using a substrate, so we'll go down and pick yes. And it's a 18 by 24 coroplast sign. So I got my 18 by 24 4 millimeter coroplast sign that was in my um, sign media or my mask ink and extras tab under the different products there. So I can see that my cost for this single piece is a dollar and twelve cents, and I can put in how many I'm putting in the job. Maybe I'm doing six of these for the customer. It updates for total cost of the job, sale price price per item. I'm going to charge them ten dollars per. And I'm making a little over almost $9 per item. And I can do all of those in one hour. Oop, I hit enter and it goes to the next tab. So if I'm in, it takes me an hour to do these, I'm actually losing a little bit of money. Maybe I can complete this in a half hour. So I would put 12 in there. So now I keep hitting that enter and making it jump. Sorry about that. Now I would see if it took me a half an hour to do it, I'd be making $43 over my overhead cost in the shop. So that gives you a quick overview of the sign tab. Again, the same thing with this, with the multi-layer support. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit more. In multi-layer support, the buttons are in a slightly different area. We've got layer one, two, three, and four here, and it will update on this side over here for the different layers, and it'll put your cost of the materials for the job, number of items in there. Everything is the same as before. I'll take a look at this one to make sure that we get the total uh, for the job cost in there. Uh, which I don't think is in this one either, so I'll have to add that one too before we publish it. But all of this is the same in there. So the sign products and the heat transfer are identical in concept, it's just the sign products has a lot more variables, a lot more options for you to be able to play with. So that's an overview of the sign products. Uh, again, don't forget you can do multimedia. If I want to, I could do one layer's CAD cut, one layer's digital print and cut, and so on and so forth, choose my different items. And when I'm done with it, I can order that particular product. If I and see that I need some yards of it or I need it, I can order and I can reset fields and that'll reset everything in the document for me. So that goes there. So we'll return back to the main page and then we're going to look at white and metallic ink support. So for the white and metallic ink support, I'll go back to my sign products tab and in here, We'll do a sort of this magnet we're going to do it on, and we're going to do a 24 by 18 inch magnet for the side of a vehicle. Um, no mask was needed with this. Ink was used. Yes, I, I put ink into this. And now I'm going to use white and metallic ink. Um, the customer needed metallic ink on this one. So I can drop down this menu, and it gives me white, metallic, or both, or none. So I can do both or one or the other or none at all. On this one, like I said, I'm going to use metallic. So I put metallic in there. And now I need to input in there a value for how many milliliters used. When we use the ink number uh, from our calculations before, that was on the ink mask and extras tab right here. We'll click on that. And you can see our ink in here for the CMYK colors on these large format printers. I did that average of 25 cents per square foot. Again, that was derived from taking the total output of the printers in my wife's shop. She's got several printers here for a two week period, how much media had gone through it and how much ink I'd used. And I calculated out and we averaged 23 cents a square foot was our, our running total on that. I bumped it up to 25 cents to give myself a little margin error in there and also to kind of give me a little wiggle room and it's a nice easy number to work with. With white and metallic, generally we're not covering the entire item with white or metallic ink. We may be doing just a portion of it. Um, so let's, uh, actually I've got a file that I can bring up real quick that's got white ink in it. And you can see this, this calculation here for the white and metallic ink is based off of the price per cartridge and how many milliliters it has in it. So we'll go back to our sign products and instead of metallic we'll use white and I need to figure out how much white ink I've used. Uh, the printers that I work with are the Roland VersaCam, so I'll go to VersaWorks and we're going to 
put a job in here real quick, add to QB, and I've got a white ink job that I, I used as an example here. So we'll put this white ink job in here and wait for it to load real quick. And then I would go through and set up my variables in VersaWorks just like I'm going to uh, print the job. So we'll go to the settings. The computer's acting a little slow. I've got a lot of recording going on here. And we would put our different things in here. I've got to tell it some sort of clear media. So we'll go to a clear calendared vinyl. And I'm going to do uh, CMYK plus white in this. And I've got all my other variables set up. We need that layout to be 12 by 24. So we'll just put this as 24 inches. And we get a, a little bit more realistic on this job here. So once I've got everything set up and I go through all the different variables, I'm not going to go through that for the calculator. What you need to do is in VersaWorks, we can rip the job. And after you've ripped it, we'll give it a couple seconds here, we can open up the job log in VersaWorks and it will show us an estimation of the inks that we're going to use and how many milliliters of it. So it's going to take it a second or two here. And uh, should have gone with one that was already ripped, uh, had it an example to spit up for you guys. Hopefully it won't take too long. It always is misleading. It shows 1% for a little bit of time and then it'll jump up. And uh, we'll see today it probably won't. We'll give it a couple seconds more before I switch to a tab and, and go to one that I've already got set up maybe. Yeah, it doesn't look like it wants to update real quick for us. So I'm just going to hit cancel on that. And uh, I had some jobs that I did earlier, This the same job, Trevino Inc., and I ripped it, but it hasn't printed. So this one was ripped. Now I can go to View and Job Log, and it always opens up as a small window right here. You just have to expand it. And then I can look at that rip for the Trevino, uh, Trevino White Ink, and I can see that ink consumption was 0 0.07 cc's, if I double click on this, it opens up another window that shows me each and every one of the inks. And I can see in this one, for this white, I use 0 0.07 cc's. A cc is a cubic centimeter, which is a milliliter. So I know for this job, for running it, I'm only going to use 0 0.07 milliliters. And that's where I would get my number. We'll close all this out and minimize this. To come back into the job, and the white ink used right here, I can put 0 0.07 and it will update the cost of that specialty ink right there for me. So that's how we get that number and work with metallic and white inks. Generally, when you're working with a job with those inks, you're not covering the entire product with it. So working out an average per square foot is not an accurate way of uh, working with that. And it's, it's not a good estimation. You, you'll end up putting a lot more money into this than, than you realize. Uh, so we, we do the rip of the job after we've set it up, go into the job settings there or the job log and take a look at the exact amount of ink and that's how we can use our white and metallic ink and have it for our calculations. And we'll return back to the main page. So that is the overview of the Imprintables Warehouse Ultimate Pricing Calculator. A lot going into this calculator. There's a, a lot of tabs and buttons, and I know it can be confusing. Come on back to the video anytime you need to. You can also contact me at stephenimprintables.com. My contact information is also in the description of this video, along with the times of where each one of the different sections is, so you can go right to that and review that if you need to. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope it's a product that you use all the time in your shop and it makes your life easier. And I look forward to getting feedback from all of you out there on how we can continue to enhance this calculator and make it a essential tool for everybody in their shop. Thanks again for stopping by and I hope to see you at the next video.